Hi, and welcome to our series on chemical bonding. We want to revisit some of the concepts we looked at earlier with the Vesper theory. You might recall back when we used to do molecules such as methane, we would start with a very quick Lewis dot diagram of the situation, placing carbon into the central atom and surrounding it then with the hydrogens. We then determine the number of electrons to use. Carbon contributes four valence electrons and four hydrogens with one each, eight electrons. We began at the bonding sites and then proceeded to fill up the octets of the atoms on the outside. To determine the shape of the molecule, we examined the central atom and how many domains that atom had, in this case, four domains. And that then led to the idea that this particular molecule was a tetrahedral shape because those domains would get as far apart from each other as possible. Now, four domains tended to happen a lot because of the octet rule. I now want to examine some molecules that exceed this four domain limit that we tend to have due to the octet rule. And the first one I want to examine is this molecule, PCL5. At first glance, I'll do a quick total of electrons, five from the phosphorus and seven chlorines, uh, sorry, seven electrons from five chlorines gives me a total of 40 electrons to use in my picture. So we'll begin with phosphorus in the center. We'll paste the five chlorines about the central atom. We'll begin at the bonding sites. Which uses up 10 electrons and then we'll complete the octets of the atoms on the perimeter. Now examining our central atom, we can see that we have five domains about the central atom. How will those five domains arrange themselves to get as far apart as possible? Well, here's a picture of how that can be accomplished. This particular arrangement is referred to as trigonal bipyramidal. Now, that comes about from the concept that we have a triangle arrangement in this plane. And the pyramid rises up from those vertices, both above and below the plane of the triangle. In this case, all of those pairs are bonded, so there would be chlorines located on every single one of these domains, and hence the shape of the molecule and the shape of the domains are the same. PCL5 forms a trigonal bipyramidal shape. Now we tend to draw this this way. I'll see if I have some room here to do it. We would put phosphorus here in the middle to indicate the trigonal nature, the plane of the triangle, that one coming out of the page, that one coming into the page, and chlorines located here, here, and here. The bond angles in here would be 120 degrees. Now we go above and below the plane of the triangle to locate our other chlorine atoms. And these form angles of 90 degrees with the plane of the triangle. Now here are a couple other structures that do the same thing. Have a trigonal bipyramidal arrangement for their domains. So sulfur uh, brings six electrons into the picture and fluorine 28 for a total of 34 electrons. So I'll start by placing sulfur in the middle. I'll place my fluorines around it. Start at the bonding sites with my electrons. Complete the octets of the atoms
Now at this point I've used up 32 of my 34 electrons, so there's two more that I now will give to the central atom. Sulfur now has five electron domains, and as a result, will tend to form this particular arrangement. So I'll start with uh, sulfur in the middle. We'll have the plane of the triangle, and we'll have above and below. So this is how the electron domains will arrange themselves. Now only four of them are bonded. So that one's bonded, um, that one all bond, that one all bond, and that one all bond. And here will be my unbonded pair of electrons. Now that unbonded pair of electrons will cause a slight distortion in the angles. Remember that they repel a little bit more. So that's going to reduce the angle in here from 90. So with the plane of the triangle, this angle in here will be somewhat less than 90 degrees. And also the 120 will also be somewhat distorted to be less than 120. The shape given to this is the seesaw. And the last one I'll look at the, this genre that has this arrangement, um, ClF3, chlorine trifluoride. So again, a quick total of electrons, 7 from the chlorine, 21. I'm allowed 28 electrons in my picture. So I'll start with the chlorine in the center. I'll put three fluorines around it. Put them at the bonding sites. Complete the octets. I've used up 24. I have four remaining electrons, which I'll now give to the central atom. So again, five domains located around that particular chlorine. So again, that chlorine will set up with a planar arrangement for the domains and above and below. And three of these are bonded, so the fluorine will go here, here, and here. And my unbonded electrons here and here. Again, they will distort this shape um, because of their ability to repel a little bit more. So my angle in here will be somewhat uh, less than 109, uh, so it's less than 90 degrees. Um, and this is called a T-shape although it's a somewhat distorted T. So, uh, with five domains, one begins with a trigonal bipyramidal arrangement, and then, as before with shapes, we can get variations of the shapes of the molecules based off that arrangement. Now, five electron domains isn't the limit. We can even go up to a higher number of electron domains in these molecules. Um, larger atoms are capable of holding more than the octet. So if we take a look at sulfur uh, hexafluoride, we have six electrons from the sulfur, and we've got uh, six fluorines at seven apiece. We have 48 electrons to fit into our picture here. So again, we'll start with uh, sulfur in the middle, and I'll surround it then by six fluorines Start at the bonding sites. Complete the octets. I now have six electron domains located about my sulfur in the middle. Now the shape that that will take is shown here. This shape is called an octahedral. Um, we can recognize it because we sort of have here a square in this plane, this one being behind the molecule, and we have apexes above and below, so these vertices would head up to there as well as below. And this arrangement is called an octahedral.
the bond angles that we have present in this shape are 90 degrees on all planes. So I'm going to take this uh, out of here just so I can sketch it uh, for you, but just recall that shape. So to sketch this one, I would put sulfur in the middle, coming out of the page and out of the page and then into the page and into the page. So this forms the plane of the square. And then I have above and below. So there's a sketch of the six domains that would happen. In this case, all of them are bonded. So I'll put the fluorines all here. And I have bond angles in here of 90 degrees in all locations. Here are some others that also follow these, this particular arrangement of an octahedral for their domains. Bromine has seven, and again, seven electrons in fluorine and five of them all together, 42 in my picture. So we'll put bromine here in the center with five fluorines around it. We'll complete the octets of the people on the outside. And we have one unbonded pair. So again, six electron domains, so that central bromine coming out of the page, out of the page, and into the page, above and below. And then we'll put on our particular molecules. So we'll attach to them the fluorines. And my unbonded pair I'll put down here. Now this particular shape, we have a square here um, making a pyramid-like shape. So this is a square-based pyramid. But again, the electrons are based on an octahedral shape. The angles in here would typically be 90, but due to the unbonded pair, we get some distortion of that angle. So we're going to get less than 90 degrees. My last compound I want to take a look at is xenon tetrafluoride. We've been taught in earlier studies that the noble gases don't tend to react. In 1963, they were able to synthesize a compound with a noble gas, and this was the first one that they were able to do that with. So xenon brings eight electrons and fluorofluorines will bring 28 electrons. So I've got 36 in my picture. So I'll start with xenon here in the middle and we'll put uh, our four fluorines around it. Bonding site. the octets now I've used 32 electrons at this point I still have four more so I'll give them here six domains so let's sketch the shape of xenon in this situation so coming out two domains coming in sorry coming back of the page two domains and then above and below. Now two of these are unbonded, so these are the two that I will make the unbonded pairs, and these ones will all be bonded. Here I have simply a square shape arrangement, and the distortion, because I have unbonded pairs both above and below, tend to cancel the effect out of each other, so I actually have 90 degrees in here, and this is a square. So that brings to an end our look at expanded octets. Uh, we can go as high as five and six. I've yet to see seven or eight octets, but uh, I don't want to put a limit on what science can come up with. But you're responsible for understanding that some molecules can exceed the octet rule. Thanks for watching. In our next program, we'll take a look at formal charge and resonance.